So, uh, as you may know, I was supposed to be doing building tutorials. I announced that like at least a month ago now. Now I finally get the chance to do it. As you can see, different setting, different stuff, hopefully better quality than my normal videos. But yeah, so this tutorial is going to be for building gameplay, specifically for easier levels, so basically non-demon. So if that's not really something you're interested in, I'm sorry, but clearly some creators need to know how to do these things because I go into the recently rated levels and I see so many issues with just stuff stuff that could easily be avoided. So yeah, this is more targeted towards easier levels. There will be a uh, gameplay tutorial for demons. That'll probably be the next one. Hi, I'm recording. You want to say something? I'm John's special guest, guys. Special guest. Um, so, yeah, there will be a demon gameplay tutorial, uh, probably as the next video. But anyways, let's just get right into it. Quick disclaimer before I actually get into the video and stuff. Um, this tutorial is more targeted towards beginner creators. Obviously, easy gameplay isn't hard for people who have creator points or just a lot of layout experience in general. This tutorial is going to be more targeted towards beginner creators who want to get into making their own levels for people to enjoy. So yeah, for all my viewers who are already, like, decently experienced with creating this tutorial may not be the most useful for you. Yeah, just a little disclaimer before I get into the video. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just open a level real quick. We're gonna do Gameplay Tutorial. Probably spelled that right. So for today's tutorial, we're gonna be doing just basic gameplay and structuring, just for layouts. Now for easy levels, you don't want them to be annoying. Easy levels are a thing that most people who have played the game for long can just go up to and beat in like a couple of attempts. I have some Star Grinder friends myself, and I hear them getting upset a lot over very specific things that happen in like a decent amount of rated levels. So I'm going to try and show you how to avoid those kinds of things and just make basic gameplay for yourself. So for gameplay, we're just going to pick a song real quick. Okay. So for this tutorial, we're just going to be doing very basic gameplay. So I'm just going to be making a very basic layout that would not be annoying and sight readable. That's the two main things that you want to have in a level if it's going to be easy. You want to have it to be readable, not buggy. Because dying to bugs is just a super annoying thing. Especially for a level that's like you're not going to be playing for that long. Because like with easier levels, you don't want to be playing them for like, like an hour at a time. Like that's just not worth it at that point. We're just going to be starting off with some very basic gameplay. And basic gameplay always starts off with the cube, so we're just going to start with the cube. You can start off with other game modes, as long as it's like, the transition into them isn't too, like, abrupt or anything. You always want to give yourself, like, at least a little bit of time at the beginning of the level for the player to be able to get into it without being just forced into it. Or, like, if they do die on the level, then they'll have some time to process it and then get ready for the next attempt. I would say that this beginning section applies for... Mainly cube, robot, and ball. We're just going to start off with a one time speed portal. I defaulted it to half time speed instead of one. So now this is the part where it comes down to it. For easy levels, you probably don't want any kind of memory. Memory and easy levels, I feel like, just get really annoying. Just try to keep memory and having to remember specific things out of the way. Try and just make like something that somebody who is at least somewhat experienced at the game could, you know read i guess but anyways so we're just been doing some very basic cube gameplay okay so this is the part where you have to put sync into your level because you're making an easy level the players are going to want something to keep them interested in the level and not get frustrated with it at least and if they're going to get frustrated at least have like sync or something else to keep them at least somewhat engaged with the level so when you're making gameplay try to pick like a song that you can kind of sync to at least or like a song you could sync to as well but also not at the same time where it's just like over and over again. So something like that. Something that goes well with the song with the clicks, pretty much. Also, another thing that you want to keep uh, out of an easy level is timings. Timings, oh god, those are gonna be so annoying sometimes. So you can have like other structures, like I can place some spikes here and maybe like here, 
and it'll just like fill in the area a little bit but like it won't be a nuisance to the player because like you can't really mess this up that bad and if you think you could jump a little bit early here just move the block back and it won't be that much of a problem so when you're making your layout just you know keep it nice looking don't make sure it's too empty but also at the same time depending on the difficulty you want to make it so none of the filler structures i guess would intrude with that and another way i like to fill up my layouts is just put some saws down they don't have to necessarily be able to kill the player but they can just be there just to like look nice or whatever so i could put like a saw right here and it doesn't affect the actual gameplay route at all it's just there to look nice um there's not really much to teach about honestly it's just like just make it readable make it fun make it go to the music and honestly you'll have like a pretty decent playing level it might not be the most fun thing in the world but that also really depends on like how good the player is me personally i'm probably way too good at the game probably more good than i should be so i'm not gonna find easy levels fun but for star grinders who play easy levels all the time just make your gameplay fair honestly that's really what it comes down to is just making it fair and not buggy and also keep it interesting you want to keep it interesting too because obviously i don't think many people want their players to be bored when they're playing their levels so keep it interesting like some gravity switches but also at the same time remember you have to keep things readable you don't want things to be annoying or off screen but like a double spike here or something like that for parts of the song where it goes like this the da -da 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 -da, that would be too fast for the player to really click for like an easy level so you could just put like a short auto or something like that a lot of people use like blue pads and stuff and also that sets you up pretty nicely into your next part of the gameplay so it's just something like this or you have to jump onto it something like that maybe it's a little off sync so we'll do this yeah, and also just try to account for like possible things that could happen if you hit these orbs differently like say i hit this orb too late i think you probably die see like that if somebody hit this hits this orb too late they're gonna hit this portal early and then they're gonna die and fall you kind of want to like make up for that the best way to do it is just to extend the structure like this and if you think the structure is too big to have in the level you could just do something along the lines of um this this wouldn't really affect the gameplay at all you can have like a one block gap where you do need to jump it doesn't really affect it and if it does i usually just like to use these uh translucent looking blocks from right here and it'll separate the structures and make it easier to decorate now you just want to make sure that like specific ways you hit orbs won't kill the player you want to make sure no matter see if i hit the orb too early i died to that structure so now that's a problem but what we can do is this and another way we could fix that is probably by like rotating this portal let's say like 35 degrees see now if i hit this orb late or just miss it i guess if i hit this orb late i'm fine if I buffer the orb, hit it as early as possible, I'm still okay. That's the kind of things you want to look out for. Now I'm going to show you some things that you don't want to do. So let's continue our layout here. So you don't want anything like this. You don't want random difficulty spikes. Difficulty spikes are super annoying. No matter what difficulty level is, the people who are playing your level will probably die at it because it's just such a spike in difficulty that they weren't prepared for it unless they had practice beforehand. And for easy levels, not many people really go into practice mode for that kind of stuff. This triple spike is way too hard compared to the rest of the layout so far. Another thing is you don't want timings. A lot of timings I see in easy levels are timings like these. While it doesn't look hard and might not be hard to some people, it could be hard to like a newer player trying to just beat the level. And also orb timings. And just like, you just want to make sure it's readable. If I go play what I made right now, I should be able to buffer every orb. And some people think buffers, just buffers, isn't fun. Which I can understand that, because you basically already know how to beat the level. But it's better to have all buffers than, like, the occasional timing in there that could mess the player up and kind of ruin the flow of the gameplay, honestly. I would say right here, I would say that's a pretty decent, easy gameplay. Some stuff you don't want, and I think this is a pretty obvious one that a lot of creators already know, but I'm going to mention it anyways because I feel like it should just be mentioned because it's a red flag. So blind jumps. Blind jumps are something that should never be put in a level ever. I never understood why people thought that these things were a good idea. So if I go play the level here, I'm just playing the game. Now I'm falling upwards and I have no idea what's up here. There's a blind timing. So it could mess the player up. They could try and buffer it and die. 
or they could try and click it late and accidentally hit the spike. That's something you don't want either. But yeah, honestly, that's really it for the easy gameplay. We'll do something else with a different game mode. Now for this next section, this stuff will apply for ship, UFO, and let's say wave. For the sake of the tutorial, I'll just do ship because it's probably the easiest for me. What you want to do for these three game modes and easy levels is you want to make it fun, but also not too complex or annoying. You want to make it readable, but not too complicated. If it's a demon level, you can make the gameplay complicated as long as it's consistent and fun. But with easy levels, you can't really do that. And honestly, with ship gameplay, it depends on what difficulty of easy you're going for. Like if you're making like, let's just say like a four star. Four star, you'd probably want like a structure here. Maybe like a few spikes. And then up here. So like this would probably be like a good like four star kind of gameplay. Maybe five star. So let me just make a little bit more gameplay here. I'd say this is a good about like four or five star gameplay right here. But also, if you remember back here, I said that sync is a pretty good part or a pretty good way to keep the player interested and engaged in your level and give them more motivation to beat the level. Sync is a good way. And there are ways you can sync easy gameplay in ship, wave, and UFO without making it too complicated. I think the two easiest ways to do that would to be to use gravity portals and then the mini and big portal. Now you don't want to overuse these, but like just enough to give the player like something to be interested in, to focus on and keep their attention towards the level other than just autopiloting. So right here when the song changes a little bit, I feel like this would be a good spot to like put, let's say a gravity portal. So we'll go reverse gravity here. So yeah, something like that. And then just keep making your gameplay. Also to keep the player interested, you could use some slopes as well. I think they're underutilized because of just how hard it is to decorate them sometimes. But I still think people should use them more often. So yeah, we could have like another saw blade here. Maybe like a small structure right down here. Also, another thing is you want to keep your obstacles that you have to avoid clear. And a way of doing that is obviously just making it so deco or other parts of the layout or structuring isn't intrusive in any way. But also another good way to do that is arrows. So in this tab right here, there are some lovely arrows that you could use. You have these three arrows and you can also use this triangle as an arrow if you wanted to. And since this is just the gameplay and you're not really doing deco yet, put some arrows. You don't even have to use arrows either. You could use these circles or diamonds to just like trace your path. When you're making easy gameplay, you want to keep it simple. Something that lets the player know where they should probably go. Also another thing, do not stack portals. Doing this messes so many people up. Depending on which layer, uh, which portal is layered on top, they're only going to see that portal when sight reading, especially if it's faster gameplay. With a level like this, you can clearly tell that like there's two portals there, but it's also, if it's faster, it's harder to sight read that. So if you do want something here where it's going to go mini and reverse at the same time, try and scale down one of the portals a little bit, maybe to like 0.75 normally or just like a quarter smaller than the actual portal and just put it like right in front of the portal. So when I go to play the level, you can clearly tell that both of them are there. So that makes it more sight readable and stuff. Now, like I said, this applies to also these two game modes. Let's try the UFO. See, UFO. The wave might be a little bit more complicated because of the mini. Yeah, see, that's a little bit... Wave is a little bit different, I will admit. So it is a little bit harder to sync with the wave. But honestly, sync with wave and easy levels shouldn't be that much of a concern. So yeah, that's pretty much the basics of just making gameplay. So let's just play what we made. So yeah, so you see everything is sight readable. Uh, there's no blind jumps, no bugs, no nothing invisible either. When making gameplay, you want to keep things as visible as possible. I know it's tempting to do like alpha trigger stuff and make things invisible that you don't want the players to see. And trust me, I'd, I've done that too. Like this is a random layout I was making while I was bored. If you see here, I have group one set to invisible, group two set to half opacity. And if we turn off preview mode, the only thing I really have invisible here are these S blocks, but that doesn't really do anything. But you can see like these speed portals are invisible. 
But to be fair, this is to keep the level synced. This is the only time you'd want to use an alpha trigger to keep something invisible. But you can still see in the level, you can still see the visible speed change. And the only reason these three are invisible is so if the player falls a little bit after this specific portal, they'll still hit these ones and the level will still be on sync. So those are the, really the only times you'd want to use them. Other than that, you can see I have not used the alpha trigger at all, except for this bug fix right here. Which, honestly, I use this way more than I should, but I would avoid this as best as you could. This is an example of how to not, like, make gameplay. As you can see, my UFO just teleported with no indication at all. Which is not that big of a deal in this level specifically, but I would avoid that as much as you can for easy gameplay. Um, make sure it works on all refresh rates. Even though you think this would work on all refresh rates just because of how open and friendly it is, there's still a chance that it could not work. I think with this level specifically, it would be fine. I don't have FPS bypass to be able to access that because I'm on my tech computer. But just even if it is like a seven star or like a five star or something and you think it wouldn't have bugs and it looked like it wouldn't have bugs, it doesn't hurt to have like one or two people with access to different refresh rates to just play through it. I used to think it was kind of pointless and then I started to star grind a little bit one day because I was bored and I realized how important playtesting actually is. Like, I don't know if you guys noticed, but like when levels get raided, the creators of the level see comments about like, hey, there's a bug here, and then levels get like a billion updates. Yeah, just keep that in mind. Once you finish your layout, it doesn't hurt to get playtesters, is basically what I'm saying. So yeah, that's how you make easy gameplay. Um, hopefully I covered everything that people should know, <laughs> at least. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of the tutorial, but you know, I'm me. But yeah, hopefully I covered up some things that even some more experienced creators didn't know about or weren't aware of. I'm sorry if this wasn't that useful for you, because I'm like I said in the disclaimer at the beginning of the video, it's more targeted towards beginner creators who just want to get into creating because I think it's fun or something. That's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you learned something from this. And yeah, see you in the next video. Who knows when that'll be.